One year and eight months ago, a fella in Finland found an unattended wallet. In its place, he left a note with a math problem. Black wallet found. You can contact me by solving this equation. A sum of two numbers. This one with the wallet owner's birthday to produce the discoverer's phone number. On Monday, I will deliver it to the police station in case this math problem proves too difficult. One year after the wallet incident, the one who wrote the note posted the note to r slash mildly interesting, and it blew up. Nearly 200,000 upvotes on that one Reddit post. And in various news outlets, this story hit with comically dramatic headlines. Stranger finds lost wallet. No one prepared for what they do to find owner. Man creates clever way to return stranger's lost wallet. This is something the Riddler would leave behind. Good Samaritan devises ingenious hack to ensure lost wallet finds its its rightful owner. Went viral. Man creates secret code to find the true owner of a wallet found on the street. All this hoopla raises a few natural questions. Just how secure is this Riddler-esque ingenious secret code hack? Why did OP write a note like this in the first place instead of just using the address on the owner's ID to return the wallet or ship it? or simply bring it to the police immediately instead of Monday? Why did OP put the days before the months in the birth date format? And what ended up happening anyways? Was the wallet returned? Did the rightful owner just go to the police station? Or did they solve the ingenious riddle of adding two numbers together? All that and more, uh, right now. A couple of these questions can be answered by learning that the OP lives in Finland, which is where this story takes place. Since he's outside the USA, he uses the confusing convention of ordering the date numbers from micro to macro, instead of the intuitive alternating alphabetical ordering us Americans are used to. Also, in Finland, ID cards are not required to have an address on them. So the OP didn't have any address information he could use to return the wallet. He also couldn't return the wallet to the police immediately because he found the wallet on a Saturday. So the public facing police offices would have been closed. Under these difficult circumstances, the OP devised a clever way to give the wallet's owner a chance to receive the wallet before Monday if he was to find the note and use his birthday to get OP's phone number and call. The point of the math here is to keep OP's phone number secret from everybody except the wallet's owner. But of course, anybody could guess a birthday, plug it in, and try to ring up the resulting number. But what are the odds of that working? How secure is OP's encryption? Certainly a lower bound for the likelihood of guessing OP's number is 1 in 10 to the 8. That's because there's only one correct sum that will result in OP's number, and we have 8 digits here we have to pick to create the sum. If each digit could be anything from 0 to 9, then that's 10 choices for 8 digits, so 10 to the 8 choices, but only one of them is correct. That's odds of 1 in a 100 million of guessing correctly if it took you 20 seconds to try calling each number, it may take you over six decades to get it right. So that makes OP's scheme seem essentially 100% secure. He is not getting an unwanted phone call. But you're probably thinking there are several restrictions we could put in place for the numbers we can reasonably guess in each of these eight slots. You might think this digit, the second M, for example, can't be 9, because then this sum, 9 plus 3, would produce 12. And while there ain't nothing wrong with 12, it doesn't really feel like we're supposed to be treating this like just an ordinary sum of two numbers, but rather we're supposed to treat it like eight separate sums to determine the correct eight digits that follow the zero. Viewed that way, it means the eight sums should result in single digit answers, things that are less than 10. However, we could regard it much like a phone dial. If we're at 3 and we add 9, we circle all the way back around to 2. 
If we treat it that way, then there's no problem with a nine here, but let's just suppose we're not supposed to do that. It probably wasn't OP's intention, so we'll just assume that all of these things have to add to single digits with no funny business. That means this second M, for example, can be no bigger than six. And taking the actual context into account, this first M can't be anything other than zero or one. What the days can be will, of course, depend on what the month is, and in the case of February, it would also depend on the year. And for the years, it's not really sensible to consider years zero through 9,999, especially since year zero isn't even a thing in the Gregorian calendar. So then, what is the biggest year we should allow? Well, any Finland citizen can get an ID. It's not like you have to be 18 years old or something. So maybe their birth year is 2024. But the person who lost the wallet has to have a wallet. And for them to call the number, they also need to have a phone. So I'm comfortable assuming whoever lost the black wallet is at least 13, let's say. That means the most recent year they could have been born since this incident occurred in 2024 was 2011. And hence the latest possible date would be December 31st, 2011. On the other hand, how old could the person be? The oldest person of all time was a French woman named Jeanne Calment. She lived over 122 years, but our suspect needs to be young and fit enough to be out and about with their wallet, go looking for it once they realize it's lost, read and understand this note, and call a number to arrange a return. So again, they technically could be 122, but I'm comfortable assuming they're no older than 100. That makes the earliest possible year 1924, and the earliest possible date as a whole January 1st, 1924. Now we can revise our security calculation. Between Tuesday, the 1st of January, 1924, and Saturday, the 31st of December, 2011, there are only 32,141 days. One of those days has got to be the correct one to put in here and find OP's phone number. So if you were able to call one number every 20 seconds, you could find the right number in just over a week. Are you sweating yet, Mixa LV? Please, nobody actually do the spam calling we consider here. Remember, the only way you'd actually know if you had the number right is if the person picked up and confirmed they had found the wallet in the area you describe and agreed to meet you to return it and actually arrived at the agreed upon location to give it to you, but none of this can happen anymore because the whole thing already happened over one year ago. So this is purely hypothetical as to how easily you could have potentially stolen this wallet over a year ago when it actually happened if you found this no out in the wild. By considering the actual dates, we got this number down quite a lot, but we'll be able to get it down even further by considering the single digit sum rule we mentioned earlier. When we do the addition, there shouldn't be any carrying. All eight pairs of corresponding digits should add to a single digit. Now, between these two dates, which we agreed are the earliest and latest possible dates, most of the days are in the 1900s. But a date in the 1900s would cause a problem here because we'd have nine plus four, which breaks the single digit sum rule. So the true owner's birthday then must be in the 2000s. It could be in 2011 or 2010, but because of this eight at the end, the only other possible years are 2000 and 2001. And really, I think we can rule out 2011 and 2010. Someone born in those years would be between 12 and 14 years old at the time of the incident. And I just don't believe that a 12 year old in Finland is carrying around a black wallet. Indeed, in this 2024 data, we can see that only 
percent of payments in Finland are done with cash, one of the primary things you would put in a wallet. The data also suggests a rise in mobile and smartwatch payments, especially in young folk. So again, I'm pretty confident narrowing the birth year down to 2000 or 2001 on the grounds that a 22 to 24 year old in Finland is much more likely to have lost a wallet than a 12 to 14 year old. Additionally, if OP opened up the wallet and found that it belonged to a 12 or 13 year old, I don't think they'd have left a note inviting a minor to contact them to arrange a meeting. In that situation, you'd want to call up Skeet, Gideon, or Gordon Flowers instead of the math guy. Narrowing things down further, because of this number, above the second M, being a three, the months July through September are not possible because they'd violate the single digit sum rule. So only nine months need to be considered, including February. If you remember our leap year rules, February would have had 28 days in 2001. That's not a leap year, but 2000, we have to be careful. In the Gregorian calendar, every fourth year is a leap year. So 2000 then was a leap year. But wait, there's another rule that says every 100th year is not a leap year. So in fact, 2000 then was not a leap year. But wait, there's another rule that says every 400th year is a leap year. So then finally, 2000 was a leap year. February that year had 29 days. So then we've narrowed the possible birthdays to 547 days. Those are all of the days in 2000 and 2001, except for the days in these three months, and with the consideration that February in 2000 had 29 days in it. So 547 days, that's 547 possible phone numbers, which at 20 seconds per phone call would take just over three hours to test. But can we go even further? We can try, although it's certainly going beyond my area of expertise. And people local to Finland may have some corrections in the comments. It's no surprise that alongside Finland's adoption, of electronic payment methods, they have long been switching from landlines to mobile phones. Indeed, in 2015, just 11% of Finnish subscribers had landlines, half of them in the corporate sector. Additionally, in the original photo, we can just barely see a shadow that looks like a smartphone in landscape mode taking the picture. All of this, as well as the simple fact that OP posted this photo on Reddit, makes me pretty confident that the phone number in question is a mobile phone number. While there are some current and historical exceptions, mobile phone numbers in Finland, according to Wikipedia, generally begin with a zero. 04x, 0457, or 050. And only 04x and 050 are compatible with this sum. Now, if the phone number starts with 04 and then X, so any digit next, then that means the first day digit has to be one, so we get that 04 starting point, and then the second day digit could be anything. So in the 04X situation, only days from the 10th to the 19th are possible. On the other hand, if the phone number starts with 050, then you can see from the sum that the only days possible are the 20th days of each month. So then between the two possible years and among the nine possible months, that narrows the wallet owner's birthday down to only 198 possibilities. At 20 seconds per phone call, that would take just over one hour to check. So, was OP's method really secure? Well, yes, because there's a world of difference between making a bunch of assumptions that are individually plausible, but probably not all simultaneously true to narrow down the list of likely numbers, and just being given the phone number on the note. Even if you could luck out and get the phone number right before getting your number banned for spam, the OP would simply have to ask you to confirm your name so he could check it against the ID in the wallet and 
you'd be cooked. All of that said, what actually happened with this note? Well, according to OP, it worked. The person contacted OP later that very same day. OP confirmed the identity and presumably the wallet was promptly returned. This is just the sort of Hallmark story I'm looking for during the holiday season. And speaking of the holidays, if you're still looking for gifts, then you can't do much better than going to Mathshin.com, my math fashion brand. Mathshin.com is the exclusive home to some awesome math themed swag and accessories. You can get our super spooky Halloween trick or treat design. Sorry for how wrinkly my shirt is. This features three children trick or treating dressed up as famous mathematicians, Erdish, Euler, and Emmy Noether. And it's only available through the end of this year. We also have the classic optimal packing design. This is the optimal packing pullover. It shows the best known way to pack 17 squares into a larger containing square. And there's more too. So check it out, mastion.com, link in the description. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cutting on top the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull a brain, push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so